Hello and welcome once again. All right, we're starting tonight with the news that there will be almost 57,000 new polling units for Nigeria's 2023 election. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says there are now almost 177,000 polling stations across the country. More than 700 units have been removed from inappropriate facilities, including shrines, churches, royal palaces, and private property. INEC has fixed June 18th and July 16th for governorship elections in Ekiti and Oshun states. Following several unsuccessful attempts to create additional polling units, despite the obvious pressure from increased number of registered voters, the Commission established the voting points and voting point settlements across the states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory as a pragmatic response to necessity. The voting points were tied to the existing polling units and voting point settlements. The number of registered voters in a polling unit and the voting point settlement in the FCT was used to determine their voting points based on the upper threshold of 500 and lower threshold of 700 voters respectively. There were also limits um, used these were also the limits used for the 2019 general election. The number of new polling units in a state is the number of voting points aggregated from these polling units, particularly those having voting points. Well, let's bring in Ezenwa Nwagu, the chairman of uh, Partners for Electoral Reform, uh, joining us in the studio on Newsnight tonight. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Uh, well, it looks like INEC has been able to break this 25-year uh, jinx. I mean, since 1996, uh, no, I mean, the number of polling units have not met the growing population. What do you think, you know, has been responsible for this long uh, wait to start with? Well, uh, it's, um, you will have um, appreciated the fact that um, even the INEC chairman said there has been unsuccessful attempts mm. uh, to get this uh, happen. And because, uh, you know, election is a very testy, tensed, competitive. So anytime you talk about um, uh, issues around polling units, uh, delineation, relocation, uh, it, it causes a lot of anxiety, the suspicion, you know, the, the whole integrity threshold for, for our electoral process is still very low. So, um, and this current commission can be congratulated for its ability to meander through stakeholder anxiety, mm. fears, and, and then have this um, happen. But what has happened is that this um, 56, there are about 1,000 polling units yes. um, that were added mm -hmm. to the existing 100 and uh, some, you know, 100 and 177. Yes. Yeah. So, we are. Uh, where existing polling, uh, they call them, uh, um, what do you call it, voting points and voting settlements. Mm -hmm. And then, so all of that has been now made into a full-fledged polling unit. So we are no longer going to be having those voting points, yes. uh, voting settlements thing, which means breaking the existing polling units and now making it in a way that it is friendlier. Yeah, 500 per polling unit on like the situation where you had 700, 1,200 and the rest of them. All right. Now uh, you had just 500 people going to per be unit. Well, yes. they, they talked about um, applying a lower and upper limit threshold to disaggregate the present polling units in the country. What exactly are they saying there? I mean, what's INAIC saying there? So, so what they are saying is that, like I told you, there are polling units that are unwieldy in terms of its number. And there are other ones that are not as, um, um, not as, as, as uh, do not have the same strength mm. as this one. So you are now bringing them to- At par. To, at par, to equalization. So now you are going to be having every polling unit maximum of 500. Uh, that, that's, yeah. that's minimum. Mi I think it's 750 maximum that's or 1,000. No, 750 that, that's, now it's 500. Oh, it's, mm. it's going to be 500. We used to have 1,750. Mm. Mm. And then in that situation, you have to now create voting points 
Now, those voting points are not recognized. Mm -hmm. When you finish voting, you now have to bring all the votes from those polling, polling voting points, polling settlements, and add them together to the... That causes a lot of you know uh, confusion and that and, definitely uh, must yeah so these inappropriate the ones that you talked about the ones that are in inappropriate places mm -hmm. that have been weeded away about like churches, yes six uh, inch shrine yeah. i mean it's even funny that <laughs> you know this polling units are located in in royal palaces in the first in, place. in the first places in homes of people who probably are even partisan in the first but beyond past. the issue of polling units are there other challenges that you think anec needs to overcome before 2023, if that election is going to come, you know, without any stress. E elections would normally have its issues, but we... Yeah, but what are the key issues that the, need the, to be surmounted the, very the, the bigger challenge will be the issue of the perennial logistics challenges that we used to have, which has to do with late remittance of funds to INEC. So mm -hmm. we must be able to deal with that 180 days before the elections. And that's why this um, electoral reform issues that is going on in the National Assembly becomes very important. Mm -hmm. That they are able to have resources and funds to do procurement, to engage in the printing of materials and other logistics let issues. Me, let, let me take that further. Yeah. Um, the president says it will help INEC to rebuild its bond stations. About 42 of these stations or facilities were burned. Uh, do you see the president making good his promise? INEC really needs that. I, I, I don't think we should run a country where it has to, where we have to be depending on, on promises. We have to have clear legislation. The National Assembly appropriates funds. It's, mm -hmm. the, it's the keeper of the pulse of the nation. So we must have a situation in which we can either take this back to the National Assembly in terms of the challenges that the the ascents that has taken place happens. But it shouldn't depend on the discretion, mm -hmm. whims and caprices of, of the president. And I think that's the challenge where we build personality cult. So when that happens, we are grateful to him. And then he, who pays the piper? Dictates the tune. Do you think INEC is doing enough in terms of voter education? Because INEC says part of what it plans to do is to, you know, ensure that democracy is deepened in Nigeria, and that can only happen with a huge dose of uh, voter education. INEC also says it engaged stakeholders like yourself. Uh, maybe you want to shed some light on, you know, the issues that were addressed. Well, it's, it's, the it's, it's the responsibility meetings. of uh, INEC to engage in voter civic education, but it's not its sole responsibility. Mm -hmm. The political parties who are the direct beneficiary of you know all of this that we're doing at the end of the day they are the ones who will yeah. get the votes they need to come in civil society and it can never be enough should that already start it, now it, it should have years? started yesterday okay so the, the the point is that all of us the different stakeholders or everybody in the p stakeholder pyramid for the electoral process needs to be involved in dealing with the challenges that we have in our electoral system that mm -hmm. is what voter education is telling people the need for them to go and register first and foremost to understand that they don't need to collect those by proxy, mm. that there shouldn't be distribution of voters' card. You need to go there physically but according but to the Before we let you run, uh, uh, states with more registered voters are to get more polling units. How we should that... How do you... What's your sense of that? Because I was thinking, what if in instances where you don't have... Where you're not sure of that the particular... People that are registered are really voters that should be registered. That's what INEC says. Mm. The reason for sharing this polling it is yes, based so, on... So, so, so there is also the, 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 the situation in which, at the end of the day, names of registered voters are placed, and a, a, a period is given to sometimes seven days for people to go and identify that their names are there. And that even if they see names that shouldn't ordinarily be there, they raise alarm. But sometimes we are very... Lags. We are not interested. That mm. happens. People don't go. At the end of the day, they, they lament. Isn't so that it's, it's where e-voting really sh needs to come in very seriously? Well, so the, this e-voting thing, the e-voting yeah. thing has to, there is a, you have to first remove the legislative obstacle. Yeah. Get it into law. After you get it into law, then you now look at the mechanics of implementation. Because mm. at the end of the day, not even anywhere in the world do you have complete electronic voting. It's still a mix of both yeah. electronic and manual. Mm. All right, thank you so much for being on the program. Thank we'll you. continue with the rest of our stories here on Arise News.